Okay, this is tutorial 24 and Blender part 10. We're going to pick up the pace here a little bit, so I'm going to use all the things that I've already showed you how to do, and I'm just going to go for it here. Give myself some more windows to work with. One is going to be side view, this one's going to remain a side view, this one's going to be top view, and this one's going to be front view. Actually, I'm going to make this one front view, and this one top view, and this one side view. It doesn't really matter, it's a preference. Okay, so now the goal is to create the first couple of radii, radiuses, of this uh, plain fuselage in order to link this windscreen object to that smoothly. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to snap the cursor to the selection, and I'm going to tab into edit mode, and I'm going to add a circle with 36 vertices, and I'm going to make sure that I'm in this mode here, the pivot mode around the 3D cursor. I'm going to resize it a little bit to match the uh, radius of the fuselage, and I'm going to rotate it by 5 degrees so that the extremities of the circle are taken up by vertices. Now. The reason I do this is because in side view, you want to be able to see this and this vertex and not just both vertices in one plane. So that's why I do it. It's just a preference thing. Okay, so I select the circle by hitting L and then I move it down, constraining it to the z-axis. I'm noticing here that uh, the side view and front view are not identical to each other. So I'm going to have to compensate for that just a little bit. I'm going to have to go up. And this is very common with background images. You will very seldom find something that is completely uh, reliable in all three views and you're gonna have to use your creativity to compensate for any discrepancies you might come across so now I'm going to take this ring that I just created and I'm going to make a copy of it and move it forward and create the next uh, sort of the nose ring here of the fuselage then I'm gonna take this bottom vertex and snap the cursor to it and select this ring again with L and shrink it down to size okay and now notice how the front view shows the nose sort of flattened. And also just to point out that this doesn't quite reach the side there. So we're going to have to stretch out this ring sideways so that it matches the body contour. So again, I hit S for resize and X to constrain it to the X axis. And now we could potentially skin these two rings together and they would make up a nice and smooth fuselage part. Okay, so now let me go and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this contour here and I'm going to use again a very uh, personal technique. I don't know if you're going to like it, but I'm going to select this ring again with the L function and then I'm going to extrude this whole ring forward a little bit so that it's sitting about halfway in between the ring that I originally created and the back edge of the windshield here. And now I'm going to select only these guys here and I'm going to extrude them further and start rotating them around this curvature here. And I'm going to have to find a pivot point so that when I extrude and rotate it's going to actually conform to sort of this curvature here, at least at first. That will guarantee a smooth looking body. So I snap the cursor to this particular vertex and then I select these top four or five vertices, I don't know how many they are, and I start extruding them and I rotate them and because they snap to that cursor that I have down there, I start out with 10 degree rotations and then I extrude some more and this time I'm going to do only five degree rotations see where that takes me. This is almost like creating a sphere and this method guarantees that we have a very nice and smooth, very even distribution of vertices along this uh, complicated shape. And one more. Okay, so I've found now that I probably need to stretch this whole thing forward a little bit so I can link select it and I can hit S and constrain it to the Y axis and stretch it forward until it's adapted to the curve I see in the background. But now we have the makings of a smooth transition between a roof and cockpit. Actually, if I hit set smooth uh, and I recalculate all the normals outside, this is already what we get. Not bad. So now I'm going to go ahead and uh, clean this up and there's going to be several techniques I'm going to use. One technique is going to simply be, uh, first of all, to move this vertex in a little bit more to adapt to the curvature of uh, what we see the roof having and um, this is going to be sort of eyeballing it. It's not going to have too big an effect in terms of making the uh, body unsmooth or whatever. Then here I can uh, merge these vertices together and I'm going to choose to merge them to the windshield because I know that that was placed fairly accurately. And here I'm going to merge them as well and we're, we're going to start seeing some uh, geometric chaos happening here and especially because uh, there's faces that are being quite distorted in this process. So we're going to have to select the ones that are closest to where the action is at here, and the rest can be actually deleted. And uh, 
pull this one here and this next one is going to go here I can delete this one and I'll pull this one over there this one over here actually I'm going to have to pull this one over here and then this one will go over here and then this one is going to go on this edge and this one is going to meet up with him there let's see how it looks like in solid view not bad okay uh, we might have to fix this one up a little bit apply a trick that I've learned in blender and that is you can hit control E and rotate the seam clockwise and that might solve some of these weirdnesses that we're seeing maybe we'll have to get creative and do something like this sort of in anticipation of where all these things merge so you don't have all the triangles uh, bunched up in one corner and that smoothed things out quite nicely and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to merge this vertex with that one and then we have we're sort of home free to create faces along these edges here that make up the link between the main body radius and the edge of the windshield let's see how this looks in solid view not bad at all we don't have too many artifacts going on here so we're doing good the one thing that still bothers me a little bit is this part here. Notice there's sort of a hard edge there, and that's because of bad topology. I called it topography in my last tutorial, which is wrong. It's supposed to be topology. So here is a situation where I'm wondering, what can I do about this weird... It is it is a quad, and I think I might be better off making it a triangle. So how do I do that? Well, I select the quad, or I can go here to this uh, face select mode and just select that face. And then I can hit Control F, and I could say Triangulate. So now it's created two triangles from that one quad, and I can do the same thing here. Now sometimes this gives us ideas of how we can make it a little bit smoother. But in this case, I think the triangles already create a bit of a smoother edge there, and it looks better to me, so uh, we can continue on. And what I'm going to do next is just try to fill in this, the rest of this stuff here. So go back into edit mode and select the vertex mode here. Now if we look from top view, we see that there's also a little bit of a curvature we need to respect along here. So we're going to need a little bit more resolution than just, we can't just make the faces go from here to there and uh, expect it to be good enough. Notice how this is straight here and the body is actually curved. So I'm going to have to create more rings along which we will be able to make the fuselage nice. So I'm going to select this ring with the L function, and we have to sort of use our imaginations now to move this ring back and create a smooth transition between this, the position and size of this ring, and the position and size of this ring. So what I'm going to do is make a copy of maybe three or four rings, and I can copy this by hitting Shift D. That's the copy command, like a duplicate command in Blender. And maybe this place would be a good place to place the ring, because that's right where, structurally speaking, this... Uh, part of the windshield comes down and I'm going to place another one probably halfway in between like right here and I'm going to line it up with existing vertices just so that we have better connectivity there I guess you could call it maybe one more for right back here okay so let me snap the cursor to that bottom vertex again make sure I'm in that mode where the resizing pivots around the 3d cursor I'm going to select link select that ring and then I'm going to resize it until I come very close. Notice how that resizing just uh, it keeps it oval. So we're actually going to have to resize it along the z-axis in order to get where we need to be. And then, of course, I need to erase all the stuff that's redundant up here. And I do that by link selecting it and deselecting the parts that I want to keep and deleting the vertices that are sticking out on top. So let me do the same thing for this. I can keep the cursor here because it's the same plane that we're using for both this one that we already edited and this one. Remember, we're constraining it along the z-axis. And now I'm going to delete the unneeded vertices. I'm going to go to this one and link select it and do the same thing here. I need to go back here and resize them so that they match the outer wall here. So I have to hit S and X. And notice how I can, thanks to this three view here, I can line this vertex up so it'll match up as best as possible with this windshield here. So move it back a little bit there we go I deselect it select the next one and move it out as well along the x-axis 
And now I feel pretty confident about skinning this thing. And that's something we're going to cover in our next tutorial. I hope I see you around.